are here today to honor the seniors. And to begin, we want to start with uh, the class history, which will be done by John Engel. Under 
Imagine Denise in the swing when she wasn't supposed to, when she wasn't supposed to be, and was rendered unconscious. Remember when Kurt and Lance wanted to huddle in the wall of the computer room? <laughs> Remember when Dina and Cleo were not together? Remember when Gravity was with the teacher? <laughs> Remember when Dean 
over at Auntie's side of Craig's track in the school parking lot. <laughs> Remember when Minka could hold on to its good teachers? Remember when we won the state tournament? But most of all, remember the class of AA. The class of prophecy will be given by Jenny Overton. The date is May 23rd, 2008, the day before my 20th reunion and my 38th birthday. I'm sitting in my Honolulu branch of Landlady Realty waiting for Brian to pick me up. The phone rings and it's Brian. He is clear across town. He tells me to catch a cab and meet him at the airport because he is going to be late. So I, I lock the door to my office and go to the corner to catch a cab. I finally get a cab stopped and start to jump in before the guy next to me can get it. The man grabs my arm and begs me to let him have the cab. I say, no way, mister, I'm going to be late for my class reunion. I turn around and it's Mark Brazil and his wife, Christy. No. Noticing the bodyguards, I asked him what he was doing. He said he was playing basketball for the Boston Celtics. Then I remembered he was the first guy under 6'6 to be a forward in the NBA. He said he and Christy were headed for the reunion too so we could share the cab. The cab driver was getting impatient so we got in. Then the cab driver turned around to ask us for our destination when I realized it was Lance Cullen. <laughs> that immediately explained all the dents in the car. <laughs> he asked, he said he hadn't heard anything about the reunion. I then asked, you mean you didn't get your imitation from Tina Jenkins telling you about it? You knew she was the head of the English department and vice principal under the authority of John Bumgardner. John now lets boys wear shorts all year round, but only allows girls to wear mini skirts in the month of May. <laughs> I see he's still rebellious. As the cab stops, we slid into the Mercedes in front of us, which happened to be Brian. I told Lance if he'd come with us to the reunion, we would forget the accident never happened. So we, he agreed, and we all headed for the plane. As I leaned over to put my purse under my seat, I noticed the stewardess at the front of the plane. It was Micah Redding. She was just getting off duty and heading for the mainland too, so she took a seat with the rest of us and off we were. As we landed in LAX, the pilot announced that there was going to be a 24-hour delay. What are we going to do, asked Mark. We'll never make it now. Micah then said she had an idea. Meet me in front of the airport beauty salon in half an hour. While we were waiting, Lance decided to get a haircut. As he walked into the shop, he noticed the hairdresser to his right. It was Julie Perkins. Come to find out, she managed the salon. She decided to leave a day earlier and go with us. Mike returned and said, follow me. So she took us to a small hangar on the airport's grounds. It was Dan's private flying service, and who should walk around the corner but the owner, Dan Burton, who was preparing his plane for the flight back to Oklahoma. It just happened to be big enough to hold us off. As we neared Minko, Dan told us he would buzz Minko once before landing on the Minko military landing strip. We buzzed over Main Street, and there was a huge purple and silver skyscraper. Dan said it was a dance studio and self-defense school owned by Denise Fulton and Carrie Morton. <laughs> what used to be Buggy Creek, which was now Buggy Lake, after being dammed up, I saw a beautiful resort with a big black Ford turning round and round on top of the building. It looked like Kurt Horn's old pickup. Yes, he got tired of fixing the rear end. It is the KC Strip Steakhouse, owned by Kurt Horn and Craig Kirkyard, said Dan. There is a huge <coughs> sign next to the steakhouse that said, Live Dan, the Glass Bulldog, alias Scotty O'Daniel, lead singer and sex symbol. Brad Pendleton, <laughs> Brad Pendleton, head trumpet player and songwriter, and Jill Drury, backup singer and share dress alike. <laughs> Dan added that Tanya Ransom ran the steakhouse for the boys and business was booming. We went in for a smooth landing at the Minko military base. Joey Mitchell was there to greet us in his army fatigues. He said he loved his new job as head of Minko National Guard. We piled into his jeep and he took us to the Minko Hotel, located at the Minko Y, also known as the Vidoc. As we passed the park, I noticed an ostrich. Joey said Rhonda Blevins Urban ran the city park and zoo with an ostrich farm out back. <laughs> I always knew that girl was crazy. He 
he added that Christy Greenroy McComas was on the verge of bankrupting Brahms with her huge 152 dairy farm and ice cream store. <laughs> How could she fail with Marcia Critchfield managing all her stores and doing the bookkeeping? As we pulled into the hotel, the owner, Trent York, ran to greet us. He put us all up for the night free of charge. We all gathered in the big dining hall at the hotel after we were all, se after we were all settled in. We stayed up half the night talking about the rest of the students we hadn't seen yet. Joey and Trent informed us of what they were all doing. Sheila Shepard was lying in a body cast at Minko Memorial under the watchful eye of her physician, Dr. Rick Schmidt. <laughs> Dean Ralph Smith, who I might add is still married to Cleo. Sheila suffered severe damage to her whole body after attempting to be the first woman to jump Buggy Lake Dam in a borrowed car. <laughs> we understand that she still has her firebird and it still hasn't got a scratch. You would think everyone would know by now not to loan their car out to Sheila. As we sat reminiscing the phone rang, it was Tracy Shepard calling from her nightclub. It was no surprise to find out it was in total. She was checking to see if Trent had any vacancies for her star acts, George Strait and Randy Travis, who were to appear over the weekend. Even though Tracy loved Tuttle, she never forgot her friend Domingo, so she always sent her stars to stay with Trent and to eat at the KC Strip Steakhouse, then go for dessert at Christie's Ice Cream Store. As Trent got off the phone, someone asked about John Engel. Come to find out he was a millionaire. He finally took our advice and got a copyright on his basketball, football, and baseball dice game. He wasn't the only millionaire, however. Dwayne Drury had also became a great inventor. He had invented a headlight that would never burn out. <laughs> Adam Harris, sales representative for Dwayne, travels all over the world and is currently in Alaska advertising for Dwayne, so he would be unable to attend the reunion tomorrow. Joey said, we, de jo we decided it was getting late and we knew we needed our rest because we had a big day ahead of us, so we hit the hay. Well, today is the big day. It's been 20 years since we've all been together, and as we head to the KC Strip for the big celebration, I noticed Dan's plane flying in the sky with the banner behind it. It read, Happy 38th, Jenny, and Happy 20th, Class of 88. As we entered the steakhouse, I can tell that everybody made it to the reunion. It's great to know that we've all became a success in our field, in one field or another. I can't wait to see what the next 20 years will bring for us all. Good luck to each one of you, and I can't wait till 2028.
manager of relative expensive headlight incident to any board underclassmen. John McGrenner wrote his happy jeans to shine him.
have gotten the joy of sitting in our front row seats all year long, we would like to welcome them to next year's seventh graders. <laughs>
Next award is the Masonic <coughs> Award. There's not someone here to give that, is there? Okay, uh, two students that have been chosen for the Masonic Award. The girl is Jenny Overton, and the boy is Scotty O'Daniel. Coach Wade. Coach Wade uh, now is going to present his baseball awards. else 
to improve himself and to make himself one of the, one of the best ball players in the state. He was uh, he made the tournament team at uh, Western Heights tournament. Um, he was a very valuable asset on our program as far as defensively. Uh, he didn't he wasn't great and he wasn't a superstar, but he did his job better than anybody else I know of, and that has to go to Scott Still. Go to low champion. This is pretty easily to um, get um, established. We don't have to do a whole lot there. It's based on stats and uh, batting averages and a lot of times RBIs and home runs. And the, this year's batting championship award goes to Kendall McDaniel. He's 43, Established this award this year. It's called the Baseball Bulldog Award. This is for a gentleman that we felt uh, put as much effort into the game as anybody on the team. He enjoyed the game. He was never a complainer. He worked very, very hard for what he got. Uh, I considered him a first stringer, but uh, a lot of times his abilities lacked him the opportunity to play. Um, he was very happy with the one, and he probably was the worst hurt of anybody, worse, excuse me, hurt of anybody when we lost. Um, he improved tremendously over the year, and uh, I, I would, uh, I'd give my right arm to have this gentleman back next year because of the heart that he has, and uh, John Engel. is an outstanding pitcher award. Um, this is for a gentleman that um, definitely established himself as a pitcher. He, had, uh, he was the most valuable player in the Western Heights tournament. Uh, he had 93 strikeouts in 73 innings, and if you know anything about baseball, that's odds are if you come to the plate, you're going to get struck out by him. Uh, a very effective pitcher. Hopes to see uh, some college playing time, and I hope to see him playing some college ball uh, very much. Outstanding pitcher goes to Trent York. The last award I have here is the Most Valuable Player Award, and uh, this is to a gentleman that uh, had a si second highest batting average on the team at 390. He led the, led the state, or was one up in the state, in stolen bases, with 53 stolen bases. Uh, the highest winning pitching percentage at 600, and uh, probably was the biggest asset and a valuable uh, ball player on our team, and could be for anybody's team. And um, that gentleman has to be Mark Brazil. Last but not least, I would like to give a gift from the baseball team to two uh, young ladies that uh, put up with a lot to help our program. They were stat and bat girls. They uh, kept the equipment and scouting reports and worksheets and uh, put up with some cold days and bad days just to get to the good days and, and the pretty days. And, uh, and this is from the ball team uh, to Sheila Shepard, Tanya Ransom. Thank you very much.
very much. Okay, next I would like to honor our valedictorian, our salutatorian, with a couple of medals here. So our valedictorian is Brad Pelton. Would he come forward this time? And our salutatorian is Scotty O'Daniel. The YOH scholarship, which is $150, this year goes to Jenny Overton. Also have a scholarship here from the uh, University of Science and Arts in Chickasha in the amount of $1,535. This goes to Scotty O'Daniel. That was a leadership scholarship. <clears throat> I also have two $500 scholarships from the Aladdin Beauty Colleges, and uh, those go to Rhonda Blevins and Julie Perkins. students each year in writing contest and uh, I'd like to give these writing awards to them. First, Marsha Critchfield. Trent York. And Julie Perkins. Denise Fulton, and John Ingalls. Also, Mrs. Sears has a English 4 award for the, uh, what she considers, I guess, her best English 4 student. And that goes to Jenny Overton. Creative Writing Award goes to Marsha Critchfield. <laughs> Mr. Gillen has a Farm Mechanics Award he would like to present to Dan Verser. Dale Savers chemistry class. She'd like to present to the outstanding senior, Scotty O'Daniel. <laughs> BOE, Mrs. Uh, Morrison would like to present this to it's BOE 2 to Julie Perkins. Mr. Scott in his math analysis class, like his medal to go to Brad Pendleton. Also, he has certificates for some seniors that have participated in math or taken math courses for all four years that they're in school, which is quite an accomplishment. And they are as follows, Kirk Horn.
Craig Kirkegaard. Joy Mitchell. Scotty O'Daniel. Jenny Overton. Brad Pendleton. Dan Burser. And Trent York. <laughs> Mr. Treadaway would like for his speech award or medal to go to Tina Jenkins. Uh, Mrs. Witham would like for her English Board award to go to Rhonda Blevins. These next two awards are the coaches awards and they go to what the coaches consider to be the outstanding boy athlete and the outstanding girl athlete. The outstanding girl athlete, Jenny Overton. The outstanding boy athlete, Mark Brazil. Next group of seniors uh, will, uh, will receive the Oklahoma High School Honor Society. This is a society of the top 10% in each class, and they are as follows. Brad Pendleton. <laughs> Sheila Shepard. Julie Perkins, <laughs> got one last award to give. This is from the uh, Bank of Union. It is a uh, I Dare You book that will be presented to each senior. This was from the. If not, this uh, concludes our senior assembly. You guys hang around, you gotta practice for baccalaureate.
we all rise, please? By way of explanation, I'm taking the place of Brother Sam Scott due to the seriousness of Vicki McKelvey. I've asked, and I believe it'd be appropriate for us all just to bow our head for a moment of silent prayer for the McKelvey family. Would you do this, please? Our dear righteous Heavenly Father, we're grateful, Lord, and we realize that you're the God of heaven. You're the God of the universe. You're an individual God to each and every one of us. We recognize this, and we thank you, Lord, for thy magnificent power and thy love and thy compassion. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this night. We pray a special blessing upon this service tonight, Lord, that every heart will be touched and moved. You can see these young people, these young men, and these young women. Lord, we pray that you'd reach down and touch their hearts as they enter the world. We pray, God, that you'd move in a special way and lead them, guide them, and direct them. Though many times they may not solicit your help, but help them, Lord, and let them to know. Guide them, direct them, each and every one, for thy glory. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. 
retrieved during the time of declared hostility. Veterans, men in the Army, men and women in the Armed Forces who have fought, some died for the freedoms that we enjoy today. From that organization, we feel like it's important to recognize the characteristics, some of the characteristics that made our country great, and some of the characteristics for which men and women have given their lives that we enjoy. Each year, we recognize a senior young man and young woman who we feel like more nearly exemplifies these qualities. The qualities, as stated on the certificate, of courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship, and service. We hope that in the years to come, that each one of you young men and women will exhibit these characteristics. All of these characteristics are worthy, and if you possess these characteristics in life, you will do well by your fellow man and yourself as you serve. But tonight we want to honor one young man and one young lady, not that these are the only ones that may deserve these, but as in life, many times only one can be chosen, such it is tonight. With that in mind, and with the qualities in mind that I mentioned, we'd like to recognize Marsha Critchfield and Scotty O'Daniel, if you'll come forward.
13 years ago, time began putting together a very complex puzzle. Over the years, some pieces have been added while others have been lost. Today, 28 pieces remain to complete this puzzle. It is with great pride that I am able to re represent these pieces to the graduating senior class of 1988. The world is far from perfection. At times, the thought of growing up and entering into the adult world seems frightening and undesirable. But of course, nobody can control time. We must face these problems that await us. Our class model states, if we can't find a way, we'll make one. With this attitude and a dash of ambition, any piece of this puzzle can grow to be a success. Success rarely happens overnight and is never made by one single person. We owe a tremendous debt to many people who have helped mold us into what we are today. To our teachers, both past and present. Thank you for taking the time to show us what we are capable of doing. At, each of, at times you had to show your ruggedness for our own good, yet each of you looked at our spirits when we were having a bad day. You have provided us with a great education and fond memories. We will never forget you. To our parents, thank you for supporting us over the years. The times haven't always been great, but with your love and encouragement, we've made it this far. You have taught us many lessons in adulthood. As we graduate tonight, so do you. To our friends above and below us, thank you for being there when we needed someone to talk to. Without friends, life is meaningless. We will never forget the wonderful times that we shared with you. May there be many more. To the rest of the town of Minko, thank you for being supportive of our activities. You have shared our success and have cheered us on after our defeat. We appreciate, we appreciate all you've done. To my fellow classmates, thank you for going through these past years with us. There's been ups and downs, but it's been easier because of you. I leave you with this. When you step forward to receive that all-important scroll, it means you're, you're one step nearer to a long way to go. And, and yet you'll never say goodbye to teachers, books, and schools. Life will give you new assignments, harder lessons, stricter rules. But you'll find that your diploma will open wide the door of these golden opportunities you've been waiting to explore. While you gather up your memories at the end of that long aisle, you will say goodbye to classmates with a hand clasp and a smile. May the knowledge you have gathered keep you on the winning side, as you proudly face the future with confidence and pride. At least the poem is handed out tonight, a different piece of the puzzle will be snapped on. When the last one is put into place, the picture will be clear. We are becoming adults. We are stepping into the real world. It is now time for our own individual puzzles. Thank you. graduating class of Nickel High School to please rise. They have met the necessary requirements for graduation. Gail Critchfield. Jill Jeanette Drury. <coughs> Tina Gail Jenkins. Sheila Don Shepherd. Tracy Joanne Shepherd. Rhonda Leanne Glevin. Christy D. Greenroy. <laughs> Julie Ann Perkins. Tanya. 
Virginia to name Ransom. Shauna Denise Fulton. Micah Michelle Redding. Carrie Jeanette Morton. Jennifer Gay Overton. Leslie <laughs> Dina Rao. Craig Allen Kirkegaard. <laughs> Richard West. Smith. Oh, Daryl Dwayne Drury. <laughs> Scott Howard O'Daniel. <coughs> Tony Kurt Horn. Don Mark Brazil. Yeah. John Joseph Baumgarten. Wilbur Dan Purser. John Houston Engel. Dwayne York. Lance Patrick Cullen. Adam Shane Harris. David Bradley. Pendleton. Joy Dean Mitchell. Yeah. I'd like to take this time to recognize two groups of people. First of all, I'd like to ask any teacher who has taught any one of these students any year in his K through 12 years, please stand this time. Any teacher who has taught one of these 12, one of these 28 students, let's give them a hand. Now I'd like to recognize and ask to stand the parents of these 28 Young ladies and young men. Please please stand for the Would the class please rise? I'd ask you to turn and face your parents and the audience. been 12 years for some, 13 years for some, because they went to kindergarten. <laughs> now I'd like to present to you parents in the audience, the 1988 class of Minko High School.
rise. Sorry, yes, please. Dear God, we thank you again for these young men, these young women that have made this achievement in life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for keeping your hand upon them and the knowledge that they have accomplished through the teaching. We pray, God, that they'll take it out into the world and use it. But Lord, not only it, but the wisdom and the knowledge that you've given them. We pray that every heart will be stirred and that they will see a need out there that they can accomplish and fulfill through their life. We ask in the righteous name of Jesus to keep your hand upon each and every one of us. Almighty God, we ask it for thy glory. Amen and amen. The audience may be seated.